I, uh, I want to open with a quote to start, which is, no matter what they ever do to us, we must always act for the love of our people and the earth. We must not react out of hatred against those who have no sense. And of course, you know who that's from. The one and only Mr. John Trudell. Um, yeah, I mean, I never did a video like this in, oh man, I don't know how many years. Probably close to 10. Um, I, I, I did them right around Standing Rock, you know, and I uh, haven't done them since. after Standing Rock, you know, the next Standing Rock would be coming. I remember coming back to Pennsylvania and we had uh, started a, a pipeline protest here. And I just thought, you know, that was the, the new normal. I mean, I thought that, you know, the revolution was in the air. And that's just gonna be the, the thing, the way things were, right? Like it was, y'all remember it was 2009, you know, then, you know, quickening to 2010, you remember the activation codes, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12. You know, the, the, the key date really wasn't um, 12, 12, 12. It was really there about four years off. It was, it was 2016. You saw all the events leading up to 2016. So of course in 2016, right? I mean, that was it. But um, I decided to make and y'all know the rest, or, or you don't, and you're, you're going to find out. But I decided to make this video today because my brother, um, my brother texted me, and um, he made a statement, and it's it, and it reads like this. I'm going to read it to you. It said, um, "Let's see." Da -da 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 -da. Mm. I woke up to, to read in this text today. It said, um, capitalism is the problem, but socialism, communism isn't the answer. More government is not the answer. Anarchism is not the answer. I can honestly say humanity has not yet developed the socioeconomic system that can lead us out of this plight. And I said, ha ha, because the answer is not derived from a colonial socioeconomic system. These are all extensions of colonial oppression, subjugation, and class warfare. All of this European ideology sees nature as something they too are at war with. Christianity and the spread of these colonial religions first dismantles the spirit, which takes away the human's power and natural connection to the earth mother. The subject then begins to search for something that it cannot find. The subject looks in books, in the world of words, and in semantics and ideology, all failing them. These are all entrapments of the mind derived from that Eurocentric worldview. And what I mean by that is, you know, the battle between hemispheres, right? The, the right and left brain and, you know, uh, people in the society, the West, they're, they're in their heads. They want to think about everything. I got, you know, give me some time to think. I got, I got to think. And you know, all these quotes and, and it's like spirituality is like quote based and you read a book and, you know, all this different stuff, right? So then I shared a quote, um, you know, from Eddie Vedder that's, you know, oh, it's a mystery to me. We have agreed with which we have agreed. And you think you have to want more than you need until you have it all, you won't be free. You know the rest, society. And then I shared um, the definition of pantheism, which is a doctrine, and it's really not a doctrine, that's how the dictionary is using that word, but a doctrine which identifies God with the universe or regards the universe as manifestations of God. Worship that emits or tolerates all gods. Emits or tolerates all gods, okay? Um, then I, then I shared, uh, something I was reading on decolonization it said these days, it is common to find discussions of decolonization, right? Cambridge university, for example, recently announced that it will work to decolonize its English literature curriculum. The theme of decolonization gained global attention during the activism against the Dakota access pipeline in the great Sioux nation. 
treaty lands, and the tar sands in the far northern region of Great Turtle Island, just to name two examples. It makes sense in principle that decolonization can be achieved by reversing patterns of domination. Yet, where is the clear image of a decolonized society we are to emulate? There isn't one. Yet, if we are to free ourselves, we need practical steps. When we talk about decolonization, we are making an effort to think and articulate the results of colonization we want to dismantle without saying what should replace a colonized existence. Liberation is a word that appears to speak about something positive, yet provides no clear image of the kind of society that will replace institutionalized oppression. Okay, okay, okay. So we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Then I find um, this other article. All right, and I'll share the I'll share the author in the um, I'll show I'll share all the links, okay. And um, the author suggests this: here's one possibility: providing a territorial sanctuary for original nations to enable them to build models of ecological, cultural, and spiritual sustainability free from the imposition of U.S. domination. The Western mindset continues to be a primary source of domination and a little noticed paradox makes replacing a colonized mentality easier said than done. The English language I am using to write this article has been designed to reinforce and maintain the domination I want to end. We cannot end colonizing patterns by continuing to think and act in ways that maintain those patterns. The language Languages of original indigenous nations are repositories of vitally important culturally and spiritual models based on an attitude of deep reverence and respect for the earth mother, for water, and for the ecosystems of the planet. Yet we all live under the plenary power of the United States. The verb civilization is defined by Webster's as the forcing of a cultural pattern on a population to which it is foreign. We ought to translate traditional cultural and spiritual concepts for our, from our original nation languages into English. <coughs> Those meanings and teachings contain thousands of years of ancestral, cultural, and spiritual Im imagery that the Western mindset does not naturally contain. My Oglala friend and mentor, Virgil Kills, once told me, for example, that an Oglala quote a metaphor for marriage is the two wings of a bird. When they move together in unison, the bird is able to fly beautifully. Other examples include Mother Earth, the love of the land, all of our, all our relations, Mataki Owasan, the land takes care of us when we take care of the land. Some of the seven laws of Acheti Shakawin, such as Wakante Oganake, to help, to share, to give, to be generous. Or also Wawanshila, which is pity and compassion, or Wawanahan, which is to respect and to honor. Admittedly, such simple ideas can't amount to much when the traditional territory of every original nation and the land of every Indian reservation on Great Turtle Island is legally and politically defined as U.S. soil and controlled by the United States based on the doctrine of, Christi, of Christian discovery and domination. All this civilization and dominion have brought Mother Earth to a period that scientists are calling the sixth extinction, the brink of ecological collapse. What kinds of negative impacts are going to result from radiation being released daily from the devastated nuclear reactors in Fukushima, Japan? The acidification of the oceans continues unabated. The massive decline of the global insect population is a powerful indicator that the planet is not right. Western systems make it fairly impossible for us to build economic models premised on reverence and abiding a respect for all life. Clearly, we must not stay within the mental and behavioral limits of the system we say we want to replace. Yeah, I mean, so it's like, you have all these people in America now, right? America, right? And, it, and spell it right with three Ks, okay? There's no C. America, triple K, KKK, right? Because that, that's what it is. of the citizens, right, of America even know what this, the land that they're living on is even called, right, so caught up 
in this hallucination, right? This hallucination. Man, right? People don't even want to know. It's it's divide and conquer strategies where it's like, oh, that's that's the red man and we're the brown people and that's the white man and they're the yellow people. So I can't learn from the red man because I'm a brown man or I'm a black man or a white. It's just like, what the fuck are you people even talking about, man? I mean, I learned back when I was 20 years old that there is no such thing as race, man. There's absolutely no such thing as race. It's not in your DNA. I learned this in my African-American arts and culture class at the University of San Francisco, taught to us by um, a doctor, a professor in African-American arts and studies, right? And what she taught us is, is that race is a fictitious, ideolo fictitious ideological construct that was developed by the colonizing white people who had an inferiority complex, right? So they invented this race in order to you know counter that inferiority complex and make themselves seem as you know the superior one that's what race comes from man you know and here we are here we are four 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 and a half centuries later right it's crazy it's crazy man and people take so much pride in their race in racing against one another and like bob marley said you know you know, what, what would really happen if we all just started to love one another? And I'm not saying that to, to say some stupid quotes. No, it's like, really, man, really, really. Because that's what we saw at Standing Rock. Like, that's what we saw at Standing Rock. It started, it started, there was the race and what are these, what are these hippies doing here and blah, blah, blah. And then there was elements of this, um, See, because there's, there's different factions of hippie and spiritual communities, right? And a lot of these people are into the New Age, right? And of course, they don't even know that. They don't even know about the history of the New Age and Madame Blavatsky and all that stuff, right? But they enforce those ideologies of yoga and all that stuff. They, they, they were trying to teach the Native Americans yoga. And uh, man, it, it was just crazy, man. And um, I remember sitting down... Um, I remember sitting down with the whites, the hippies, and a lot of them were cool people. Um, and I remember sitting down with them, and at one time I was sitting with, and you know, it wasn't just whites. There was, it was mostly white um, in this in this circle that I was speaking with, and um, I remember being the only person who said that I don't identify with being white, you know. But they let me talk. They didn't, they didn't cut me off right away. They let they let me at least talk, and I said, um, and a lot of these, some of these people are famous music, musicians and stuff. And um, I said, you know, because they were like, oh, you know, we take offense to this and uh, the natives aren't respecting us and so we're going to leave. Um, and I said, like, how do you even identify with being a white person? Like if someone says like, fuck white people or white people suck, why would you take offense to that? Like for me, I agree with that. Um, you know, and I think that's why I was accepted and I molded right in because my ego didn't take offense because I was saying the same thing. I've been saying the same thing for for decades, decades before that. And that's all I wanted for my life was this opportunity to sit in this native circle and be part of this indigenous led resistance in the greatest uh, protest and the greatest movement of my lifetime and in, in many people's lifetime. So, I mean, of course, fuck white people. like. Why, why do you have any fucking sort of attachment to your skin color? You know, um, why do you have pride in that? Especially if you're white, like, why do you, why would you take any pride in that? You know, oh, well, my, my grandfather came from another country and suffered to come here and blah, 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 you know, and it's just like, you got to just remove, you got to just, just dig, dig out all that crap, man. There's, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing to be proud of, man. There's nothing to be proud of. You know, this, this land, this Turtle Island, it, the, the, it's a story of um, horrendous ethnocide, genocide, and Holocaust. This is the real Holocaust, right? Um, so, well, you know, it's like instead of 
having our ego relate to our past and how we were defined with our family and different things like that, like it's time to learn. It's time to sit and try to learn and um, be so grateful for this opportunity that is here before us, that you're allowed to be here. You're allowed to be part of this. You know, you're sitting here at Sacred Stone Camp and you're allowed to be part of this. And um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people didn't get it. But, you know, it just, it's like one of the only things in my, I mean, I've had a good life, but it's that one thing in my life that I just, I just go back to all the time. You know, I go back to it all the time. And I just want to bring it back, you know. Oh, I just want to be there again, man, on that Missouri River, you know. And uh, it wasn't easy, man. I mean, once the winter came, your piss was freezing before it hit the ground. Think about that, okay? Your piss was freezing before it hit the ground. I mean, we had a lot of donations, a lot of supplies, but everything froze. So we were eating a lot of canned goods, and I mean, we would have to just drop the cans in boiling pots of water just to <laughs> to uh, unfreeze them, and then we'd have to get the can openers, and and then then the, the metal would be boiling, so you wait to cool off. And I mean, you got hundreds and hundreds of people to feed at that camp, so uh, I was just it was wild. I mean, um, yeah, my job at night was. Uh, to be the sacred fire keeper, which was probably the honor, yeah, not probably, it was the honor of my lifetime. And that's where, that's where a lot of this information came from. Um, I had the opportunity to sit with some of the great chiefs, some of the great elders from Indian nations all, all around this, all around this sacred turtle island. And, um, uh, I was able to learn a lot from them. I was able to just learn how slow they speak and what great listeners they were. And they were never in a rush. Think about that. They're never in a rush. They take life slow. Think about that. And, um, I mean, that wind would be ripping 30, 35 miles an hour. It'd be like 20 degrees to, to um, yeah, it'd be about 20 degrees ambient at night, 30, 35 mile an hour of wind. Um, so real feel, negative 10, negative 15, people dying in the night because it was so cold. You know, we didn't have any, like, they call like sit, you know, we were out all primitive shelters, and um, when you arrived, you didn't have a bed or anything to start with, so um, you would sleep in your car, and um, that's what I did. Um, one of the first when I re arrived, because I went back and forth. When I re arrived one time, that's what I did, and I had a. Um, I had a negative 30 degree sleeping bag and I started, I started my vehicle a little bit at night to, to keep warm because I knew my life was on the line. And, um, that was the coldest night of my life. And I've had a lot of cold nights. Um, I've had a lot of really cold nights, but, um, living out in, with the earth, you know, not living in a house and using up all these fossil fuels and gas and all this different stuff. And, uh, yeah, my dog's gonna take a drink over here, wherever the hell he is. Yeah. Okay. Take a drink. Yeah, Moses, huh? Huh? Um. And. So I'm. That's the coldest night of my life. Like I'm saying, there was a lot of them. But 
you know, I'm, like I'm saying, I'm in that sleeping bag. I've got all types of protection on, but anything that had exposure, understand, I'm in a car, I'm protected from the wind, but the car is rocking back and forth. That's how strong the winds were. Like there's a lot of spiritual activity going on there. It's nothing I've ever experienced before. See, I don't want to go off on this tangent too much, but here's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> you don't understand this, but a lot of you don't, but when you, this colonizer's land that a lot of people are living on that has the earth dug up and, and you know, telephone poles everywhere and 5G towers and roads and all this stuff, you're, you're dismantling and dis disconnecting from the natural energy, the earth, right? It's all uprooted. But there, <laughs> there on the reservation along the Missouri River um, in, South in uh, North Dakota, I mean, it's, it's something different, okay? It's something different. And uh, there's the Thunder Beings, which are the Wakinai Iote. And man, uh, the, the elders um, and medicine people will call on them to do bidding for them. And wow, I mean, so anyway, um, freezing it, freezing in, in my car that night rocking back and forth. I got this little wolf puppy that I that I uh, got in Oregon off a cannabis farm that was traveling with me. And um, we kept each other warm that night. Uh, and then when I woke up, um, they said someone, you know, a couple cars down, they, they had passed in their sleep. Um, so that's how serious it was, you know? And um, I, everything was under, I was inside the sleeping bag. I, I had to, I had to trap myself, even though it was hard to breathe, I could just leave my nostrils out of the sleeping bag because my, my, your skin was, I was going to get um, frostbite and hypothermia, you know, just, um, just from that alone. So these were extremely severe conditions. Um, and so I was, it was hard, you know, it was hard. It was real hard. So... It's part, it's kind of like being on a survival show, right? Like, so part of you wants to get out of there and get out of those elements. But you also know that, I mean, I hope that this wasn't going to be the only chance I had to be part of something like this, you know, but seven years later, that's the case. Um, and, you know, we'll see seven and a half years later now, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And that, that's why I'm making this video, guys, girls. Like, I can't, I can't wait any longer. I mean, I need, I need, um, I need the next one ASAP. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And um, yeah, let me know, let me know if you like this video. Thank you.